Hello, my beloveds. So yesterday, um, if you tuned in, I had my daughter Avalon. Yesterday, she was 17. 17. Today, she's 18. She's an 18. adult. So she's the last one of five in our house under that umbrella of a protection and guidance. And still in our house, she's got her senior year. And uh, so we still have some time to hopefully prepare her for this next stage of life. And one big deal... And, you know, as uh, Jeff and I are just continue to grow and be humbled and be grateful and to have a revelation because we seek we seek the kingdom every day, every morning, every afternoon, every night. But um, Jeff is, you know, he just mentioned to me again about how important if we don't do this one thing for our kids above and beyond everything else we should teach them when we launch them out into the world is this. Well, I'm going I'm to back up just a little bit because I'm give you a little, little bit. In Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 6 is the Shema. It's a very, very famous passage of Scripture. It's, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And Moses goes on after that to talk about, and, and this is all talking about the, our relationship with God. It's talking about the promise of God to the Israelite people and the laws that go along with it. He says, impress these on your kids. Teach them to them when you're walking, when you're, when you're walking on your way. Because that was, that was the mode of transportation. So for us today, that's like when you're driving in the car, when you're headed to practice, when you're going on vacation, when you're going to the grocery store, talk about it with your kids when you're when you're eating sitting down at a meal which which means for most of us in busy 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 america sit down have a meal with your kids mm -hmm. talk about it and then the question really the question is what what are we talking what is what is it we're to impress on our kids solomon says raise a child up in the way you should go or teach a child in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart with when from they're it. old not now the, yeah well then the question is what what do we do our best do we just teach them stuff do we teach them about the world and you know what and here's the thing that i think is the grand thing especially those of us that know jesus have the opportunity to bestow on our kids it's faith so faith, um, faith in Latin is faith. Faith in Greek is trust. Teaching our children to trust God yeah. is exponentially more important, more valuable, more necessary, more powerful than anything else that we can teach them. That they trust the Lord, that they trust his word, that they trust God and all that he says he will do for them in providing protection and healing and hope and wisdom and rebuke and teach them how to have relationships, teach them about their money. If they don't trust God, they're going to trust a teacher, a professor, um, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. They're going to trust a human with things, making big, huge decisions. Like whether or not to go to college, then if they do go to college, what college will they go to? And if they do go to college, what will they study? You know, what is the direction? If they have, they meet a boy, they meet a boy and or a girl, depending on who your child is, a daughter or son, then, you know, who, who should they date and why should they date them? And then who should they marry and why should they, I mean, if you don't trust God, you're leaning on <laughs> what social media or a TikTok influencer. Are you kidding me? Why? What? In scripture, literally, even says, "Do not trust in man." In man, yeah. And do you, okay, here's a question: Do I trust my husband? Yeah, of course I do. But ultimately, I trust Christ, Christ in him, in and I and trust. Same here. Same here. I trust Christ in her. And even if, let's say, let's say you were unequally yoked, maybe you came to Christ and your spouse didn't, you still trust in Christ. You, your your spouse not might not be following the Lord and might be suffering because of that and in anguish and bitter and jealousy of you and all these other things that they would get because they don't have that altar that living altar of blood within them to draw from for their power they they're they're going to the altar of their job or their academia or their addiction mm -hmm. you know you can trust God to to work through you Proverbs what fifteen uh, three. Oh, no, no, no. It's a, no, no. First Peter three. It talks about how women should be around the spouse regarding um, how to be like Christ for their spouse who might be an unbeliever. But beside that, let's talk about your kids. How can we impress upon them the faith in God they need to have, the trust in His Word? How do we do that? Well, so 
you know, you, the, the question is, where does faith come from? Well, according to Scripture, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And, you know, and we can leave it up to our kids to just read the Bible and figure it out and understand it all for themselves. But, but that's what Deuteronomy 6 is talking about. Teach it to them. Talk about it. Don't just sit down and give them a lesson. Talk about it. And, and, this, well, well, it, and here's, the, here's the best part. You don't talk about faith you don't have. Mm. They need to see your faith. They need to practice faith under your wings. Like before, before 13, they're flesh of your flesh. They should experience life through the lens of your faith. And as from 15 to like 18, you're helping them figure out their trajectory. And then after that, you're guiding them, you're, you're guiding them, directing them. But, you know, I, well, I would challenge. No, I was going to say, if you're going through something and you're having to make some tough decisions, have them join you yeah. in prayer. Let yeah. them hear you crying out to the Father. Let them hear you speaking the word over your situation. Let them let them see how you have ground through it, an, an impossible pit-like situations the giants that you're facing have them join in yeah. with you yeah no it, it it's incredible okay so here's a here's a totally it'll feel like a little bit of a rabbit trail but it's not is hebrews 11 is about all of these great men of faith great women of faith they, all of these characters of the bible and we think that they're listed there for all of their deeds well go look at the stories it's not when you read what's in it's their faith it's it's the fact that they believed and as Torah said trusted in the promise God made. Well, for us that know Jesus, well, we've been given the promise of redemption, his death on the cross, which has already happened, but it's not fully complete. We still are putting faith in, in the completion of the work of Christ, which is us going to be with him, which is new bodies and new heaven and new earth and all of mm -hmm. these, these things. But it's, it's, it's not you know, it's not just let them see your good works or let them see you be legalistic or let them see you religion, let them see you, you know, um, tithe and pray. These are all very, very good things, but let them see your faith, what you believe in, which means you got to know what you believe in. What do you, and, and not just belief, because belief is up here. Faith is here. Faith is what makes us live. Faith is what motivates us to, to act and to do and, and and to walk that's what and and truth is kids kids don't want to figure this stuff out on their own they do because society's trying to tell them that it really is they don't want to they want to be guided they want to be handed the truth and and then they want to be able to test for themselves and see if it's the truth no i'm i i'm I'm praising God that no matter you know where our kids are we have kids that have walked away from the Lord and we have kids that kid that is that supremely loves the Lord and is it our fault that the others walked away is it our fault that it, or do we get and do we get the credit for the one that has that is worshiping God no that really we give ourselves way too much credit you know our job is to lead each and every one of them to the cross our job is to was to and is to and will continue to be to to be demonstrative in our faith in the Father and be humbled when we've done it wrong and say, I'm sorry, I forgive me. And you know, anything that we've done was not out of anything other than maybe we pulled away from the Lord and we were depending on our own recognizances and our own flesh to solve a problem. And that's where we screwed up. But even if we did everything perfectly, I mean, Jesus did everything perfectly and people walked away and spat at him. And so when we realize how little it has to do with whether we do things right or wrong, that, that each and every one of us has our own journey and some of us walk away from the Lord and stay, stay walking away. Some of them return. Yeah. So what we are held responsible for though. And what I love is that we impress upon our children, our faith in God, how, how awful it is without him. And, and sometimes, okay, here's the, mm, sometimes it's kind of awesome without him, right? Living in sin is fun. If it wasn't fun, we all wouldn't be doing it. It comes to an end and, and a harsh end. That house of cards on a, on, a, on a foundation of sinking sand, it is inevitable that that life will crumble. Praise God. Yeah. We've gone through it. We've done our own, our own ways of being prodigals, walking away and living without trusting God. But today, it's different. Today is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it and we will press upon you as well. Trust in him. Believe him. Follow him. Rest in him. Worship him. And in response, he gives you everything. Why? 
because you're kind of a big deal.